Welcome to Nobel Conversations. In this episode, Josh Angrist and Hito Imbens sit down with Isaiah Andrews to discuss how their research was initially received and how they responded to criticism. At the time, did you feel like sort of you were onto something? Like you felt like this was the beginning of sort of a whole line of work that you felt like was going to be important or? No, not so much that it was a whole line of work, but certainly I felt like, wow, this is... We know, proved something we proved that people something. didn't know before. Yeah, mm-hmm. and kind of, it was worth knowing. Yeah, mm-hmm. going back kind of to the, the compared to my uh, job market papers, I mean, no, I felt this was actually, this was a very clear, mm-hmm. crisp result. Mm-hmm. Well, there were definitely, there, were, there was a mixed reception, and, you know, I don't think anybody said that, oh, well, you know, this is a, already something known, you know, which is the... The nightmare scenario for a researcher, uh, where you think you've discovered something, and then somebody else, you know, says, "Oh, I knew that." But, but there definitely was a need to convince people that this was worth knowing, that instrumental variables estimates a causal effect for compliers. Yeah, but so you know, even though it took a long time to convince kind of a, a bigger audience, in some sense, even fairly quickly, the the reception was was pretty good among a small group of people. I mean, Gary kind of clearly liked it a lot from the beginning. And I remember, because at that point, Josh had, had left for Israel, but I, I remember explaining it to, uh, to Dom Rubin. And he was like, yeah, you know, you know this, this really is something here. Not right away, though. No, no, no. It took Don took it, some convincing. Yeah. By the time you got to Don, there had been some back and forth yes. with, with him in, in correspondence, actually. Yeah. But then I remember at some point getting a call or email from him saying that he was sitting at the airport in Rome and kind of looking at at the paper and they think, yeah, no, actually, there, there there's be, something you, there. You guys, you guys yeah. are onto something. Right. We were happy about so, that. Yeah. But that took longer than I think you remember. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't no. right away. <laughs> yes. Because I know that I was back in Israel by the time that happened. Yes. I left for yes. Israel in the summer of. So I was only at Harvard for two years. We had that one year. It is remarkable. I mean, that one year was so fateful for us. Yes. You know, it, and I think we, we understood there was something good happening, but maybe we didn't think it was life-changing, you know, only in retrospect. As you said, it sounds like a small group of people were initially quite receptive, perhaps took some time for a broader group of people to come around to the, come around to sort of yeah. Seeing the seeing the late framework as a valuable way to look at the world, right. I guess in, over the course of that, did you sort of were there periods where you thought maybe maybe the people saying this wasn't a useful way to look at the world were right? Did you get discouraged? Sort of how did you think about? I that? don't think I was discouraged, but the people who were saying that were smart people, you know, well informed econometricians, sophisticated readers, and I think the. The substance of the comment was, this is sort of not what econometrics is about. Econometrics, as you know, was sort of being transmitted at that time, was about structure. There was this idea that there's structure in the economy, and it's our job to discover it. And what makes it structure is it's essentially invariant. And, and so we're saying, you know, in the late theorem, that every instrument produces its own causal effect, which is is uh, in contradiction to that to some extent. And so that was where the tension was. People didn't want to give up that idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I remember kind of once, once sort of people were started arguing kind of more, more vocally against that it, it that never really bothered me that much. It, it seemed, you know, it was sort of clear that we, we had a result there and it was, it became somewhat controversial, but sort of controversial in a good way. It was clear that people felt they, they had to come out against it. Because well, there I think was, we, we think it's good now. I'm it's not good sure now. We, it was it was no, no, I, we might not know, have loved it at the yeah, time. I, you know, I, I, I remember being somewhat the more upset. There was some dinner where someone said, no, 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 you know, that paper, that, that paper with Josh, that was really, that was doing a disservice to the profession. Yeah, and, he definitely had some reactions like that. And so mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. at some level, that's, that may be indicative of the culture in general in economics at the time. I I thought back later about it. If that happened now, if I was a senior person sitting in that conversation, I would, I would call that out because it, it really was not appropriate. But it wasn't the, so bad. I think the criticism is... is no, 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 no. It, was was the, dinner, you know, it wasn't completely misguided. My, it was maybe wrong. 
No, no, but, but say, saying crazy. you can say that paper is wrong or that it's yeah. uh, but it's saying that it's a disservice yeah, to the profession. That's wrong. that's yeah. not really it's a bit yeah. personal. That's yes, and doing that not to me, but in front yeah. of my senior colleagues. Yeah. That, but nobody uh, was saying the result was wrong, and, and yes. I, I remember also some of the comments were were you know thought provoking. So we had some negative reviews, I think, on the the average causal response paper. Yeah. Somebody said, you know, these compliers, you can't figure out who they are. Right. So you, it's it's one thing to say you're estimating the effect of treatment on the treated or something like that. You can tell me who's treated. You know, people in the CPS. You know, you can't tell me who's a complier. So that was a legitimate. No, challenge. That, that, that's that's totally fair, and it's. I can I see why, why that part. Yeah, why why that part made people a little uneasy and uncomfortable. Yeah, but it it sort of at the same time because it showed that you couldn't really go beyond that. It was it was a very useful thing to realize. Mm -hmm. I remember kind of on the day we got to the the key result that I was thinking, wow, you know, this is this is sort of as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. the, the, here we actually have an insight, but it, it clearly... And we had to sell yeah. it at some yeah. point. Yeah. So yeah. For it, quite a few years we had to sell yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's proven, it's proven to be quite useful. I, I don't think we understood that it would be so useful at the time. No. I've, I did feel like early on that this, this was a substantial insight. Yeah, we but done I, something, I, but... Yeah, but I... But I, I, I did not think goals were there. Yeah. We were I don't think we were aiming there. for the Nobel. Yeah. <laughs> we were very happy to get that note at Econometrica. Are there factors or ways of approaching problems that lead people to be better at like recognizing the good stuff and taking the time to do it as opposed to dismissing it? Sometimes I think it's helpful. If you're trying to convince somebody that you have something useful to say, and maybe they don't you know, speak your language, you, you, you might need to learn their language. Yes, yes. That's, exactly. that's what we exactly. did with Don. We kind yes. of, we figured out how to, I remember we, we had a very hard time explaining the exclusion restriction to Don. Mm -hmm. Maybe rightfully so. It, it probably, I, I think Hito and I eventually figured out that it wasn't formulated very clearly, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we came up with a way to do that in the potential outcomes framework that I think kind of worked for the three of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've worked for the, the bigger literature, but yeah. I, th I think what you're saying there is exactly right. You kind of need to figure out how, not just kind of say, okay, well, I've got this language and this mm -hmm. this works great, and I've got to convince someone else to use that language. You could yeah. first figure out what language they're using, and then only then can you try to say, well, but here you're thinking of it this way, but kind of that's actually a pretty hard thing to, to do. You get someone from a different discipline, convincing them that kind of to junior faculty in a different department actually have something to say to you. That's, that takes a fair yeah. amount of effort. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote Don a number of times, yeah. fairly yeah. long letters. I, I remember thinking this is worth doing, you know, mm -hmm. that if I could convince Don, that would sort of validate the framework to some extent. Mm -hmm. I think both, both you and Don were a little bit more confident that you were right. Well, we used to argue a lot, and yes. you, you would sometimes <laughs> referee them. <laughs> yeah, yes. That was fun. I, I, I remember uh, you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't hurtful. I, I remember getting a little testy once. Uh, we had lunch in the faculty club, and we were talking we were talking about the draft lottery paper. Yeah, we were talking about never take as kind of people wouldn't serve in the military, irrespective of of whether mm -hmm. they they were getting drafted. Uh, mm -hmm. And. You had Don said something about shooting yourself in the foot <laughs> as a way of getting out of yeah. the military, and that maybe the exclusion restriction for never takes was not working. <laughs> and then whoever, whoever said that the other one was going, well, yes, you could do that, but why would you want to shoot yourself in the foot? <laughs> and it just got a little there. I, I usually go for moving to Canada for my yeah, example. Yeah, that's a good one. Can't uh, be good I'm for your that. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But he thinks it's tricky. I mean, it's the, you know, I still I get students coming from computer science, and they mm -hmm. they want to do things on causal inference, and it, it takes a huge amount of effort, kind of, to figure out how they're actually thinking about a problem mm -hmm. and whether there's, there's something there. Mm -hmm. And so now, over the years, I've gotten a lot more appreciation for the fact that Don was actually willing to kind of, yeah. you know, it took it a while, but he he did engage kind of first with Josh uh, and then with both of us in. And rather than kind of dismissing and say, okay, well, you know, I, I can't figure out what these guys are doing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably just not, not really that, yeah. uh, that mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Everybody always wants to figure out 
quickly. You know, you want yes. to save time and you want to save your brain cells for other things. Yeah. So, you know, the, the fastest route to that is to figure out why you should dismiss something. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, know, this exactly. is, I don't need to spend time on this. If you'd like to watch more Nobel Conversations, click here. Or if you'd like to learn more about econometrics, check out Josh's Mastering Econometrics series. If you'd like to learn more about Hito, Josh, and Isaiah, check out the links in the description.